Um, hang on, I just remembered I need to record this for people that are not here. Okay. So we're just, for the, anyone that's just starting listening to this recording, we're just talking about the Young Person's Guide assignment, which is up now. Okay, so I'm kind of feeling like people haven't really taken that in. So I really want you to, um, you know, maybe just take notes as we're going through class, because we did do this in the class last week, okay? Um, so what's the overall form of the work? So very basically, right, it starts off with playing the theme Oh, Sashel, yeah, go on. Theme of variations. It is kind of a theme of variations, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so if we're looking at the, the main structure of the work, it starts off with um, Britain writing that theme for the different sections of the orchestra. So the first part of the work is introducing the different families. So it has the theme written for everybody, then for the woodwind, then for the brass, I think next, then strings, then percussion. So it's all the different families playing the theme. Okay, so it's not theme and variations yet. It's just presenting the theme by the different families of the orchestra and then the whole orchestra all together. I'm hearing a ping, is that Jesse? Are you with us, Jesse? Yes, Jesse, hi, you made it. So Jesse, just, I'm going to put a pause in what we were saying just now. Jesse, uh, did you have to sign in to do this class or you managed to just get a link? Um, I had to do the, like when it does I click the link, I had to do like a sign in something. Right. Okay. But that works. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's a new way we're trying to do just to take a register. It's easy when there's only a few of you in the class, but when it's a large class, it's getting very tricky to figure out who's there. Okay, so that's why I'm doing that. I'm just hoping, to, hoping that that's working with everybody. It seems like it is. Okay. So Jesse, we're, um, we were talking about, um, uh, oh, and one other rule, Jesse, there's now a rule that you have to have your camera on on APA Zoom sessions, but you do, so it's not a problem. Okay, so we're just going over the assignment. <laughs> The young person's guide and there seems to be a little confusion about it and one issue is that some people uh, don't have a big screen to look at the score they may be looking at it on their phone so I'm gonna try and help with that okay because that definitely is a little bit of an issue but you can do it just by listening now even if you have the score on a computer screen or even print it out I would still hope that you would be listening to the piece okay it's very important to do Okay, so you can do it. I, yeah, just so yeah. I think the tricky part about it, it is to listen without the commentaries with it. Because for me, I was listening to it last night and it was kind of tricky to follow because you're thinking that somebody is going to say something at a particular part. So I'm trying to see how I could get one with like the, the narration also. So it could be easier. And if it's possible, I will just send it for the rest of the class also. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yes, so it comes, the piece is originally with commentary. Uh, Jesse, could you mute your mic again? You got a dog bark in there. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's right. So uh, this, the piece is originally written with a commentary where it says, now you'll hear the violins, now you'll hear the violas, etc. And there's some text that goes with that. Um, but most uh, performances don't have that in there. Uh, but you, I'm sure you can find it online. I mean, I've definitely um, found it in some places. There's also a great app. For, it's all about just this piece, uh, but you do have to pay for that app. Uh, but you could find there's a Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra app, which is kind of an interactive app, plus it has a video of the whole piece. So that's kind of a cool one if you want to check that out, although it is a little bit of money, like maybe five US, I think, something like that. Okay, so uh, just to go back over it, so you can do it just by listening to it. And the sections at the beginning, so the very first section is when Britain writes Purcell's theme for each different section of the orchestra. So it starts with everybody, then it's woodwind, brass, strings, percussion, everybody. So that's not really a theme and variations because it's, it's just the theme as it is, it's been written out for those different groups. Okay, now you might make some comments about how it sounds with the different families of instruments. Okay, 
but we wouldn't really consider that of, of variations yet. It's the theme, okay? But he plays the theme, what, five times, okay? Then we get into the variations, and the variations have each instrument at the time, although you might have more than one of the instruments. So, for instance, when it's the clarinet version, there are two clarinets. When it's the trombone version, there are three trombones. But it is one variation for each instrument. Okay, so then you've got to go through each of those variations and just write a little comment about that variation, how it, the characteristics of it. So I put some examples in there of words you might use to describe it. And you can definitely do that just by listening and see if you can figure out how he takes that theme and what he does to, to make the variation. Because a lot of variations sound so different that you don't even know that it's a variation. Okay, so see if you can maybe figure out what it is. And the way to really do that is look at that original theme and see how it's constructed. Okay, it's constructed with the first bar, it's just a minor triad. Bum, 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 bum. And there's a little scale. Ba, 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 bum. Okay, so we have a triad and a scale. Okay, and then it alternates really after that with triads and scales. So it's a pretty simple breakdown of that original theme. You don't have to go into what harmony is in each bar. I mean, you can if you want to, but you certainly don't need to do that because that's going to take quite a long time. And I'm not really looking for that detail of analysis, but I'm just looking for a kind of understanding of how it fits together. Okay. Uh, some of you have mentioned that, you know, it has in the first section, it's D minor, then it goes to, what does it go to next? I can't even remember. And it goes to F major, I think, right? So it goes to the major and then back to the minor. So there's a bit of that going on. You could look at those overall changes in, uh, in harmony. That, you know, that might be good to note, but you don't have to do every bar. Okay? I don't want you to do every bar. It would take too long. Okay. So you're looking at the basics of the theme, and then you're looking at how that relates to each variation. Now, there are quite a lot of variations. Okay? I'm not asking you to analyze each variation in detail. Okay, but just to go through. So if you listen through, as you're listening, you can make little notes about how it sounds. Okay, um, and note what each instrument as you go along. So you get to a variation, you write down the instrument, you write something about that variation. Okay, another thing in each variation is to consider what's the accompaniment. Okay, so if you're looking at the flutes, the first variation, they have a very small amount of accompaniment going on. Okay, because the flutes are quite light and generally quiet on the quieter side. Okay, when you get to the trombones, which is one of the louder instruments, you have the entire orchestra accompanying them. Okay, so that the accompaniment to the instrument might be another thing to think about. Okay, in each variation. So you've had the initial theme that was presented five times by the different parts of the orchestra. That was just the theme. Then you have all the different variations from the different instruments. And at the end, you have a fugue. Okay, so listening to how the instruments come in in the fugue, and then he brings in the theme again at the end. Okay. So I've pretty much laid out the essay for you there. There's not really masses more to do, but just to kind of describe those sections. Okay, and you can do that definitely just by listening. All right, and if you manage to find one that has the, the talks as well, that's probably gonna make it even easier. Okay, all right. So that was actually due today. I'm not seeing much work coming in yet. Does everyone need the weekend to get that done? Um, so I did most of the work is just basically to do the last part of the analysis and I'll type it up for you, I think, later today. Okay, great. Sounds good. Same here, same here. Okay. Well, that would be great if I could have it in today so I can, so I can give you some feedback on that, okay? So this It'll is... Okay, great. And this is, if I can give you feedback on this, that will help you for the next, the final written assignment. You can then you kind of know what I'm looking for, okay? All right, so that was the young person's guide assignment. Okay, let me just check. I haven't got anyone else trying to get on that's stuck, I think. No, okay. All right, so I wanna do a little recap on the last lesson, because today we're following on from that, okay? So in the last lesson, we looked at different symphonies, okay? So, uh, I'm just gonna get back to my list here from the last class. Okay, 
So, who can tell me what piece we started with in the last class? I think it was symphony in D minor. Yeah, it might have been in D minor, I'm not can't quite remember actually. Who's it by? Um, I think it's Bach. Yeah, the first piece we listened to was a Bach symphony, although back then it wasn't called symphony, what was it called? Symphonica. Symphonia. Almost. Symphonia. 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 So it's a bark symphonia. Um, how many movements was it in? Uh, it was in three movements, and you see it would start as fast, then slow, and then fast. No. Nope. No. Nope. Gosh. Oh. <laughs> good try. Good I try. Tried, I try. I try. Someone else. The bark symphonia. How many movements was that? No one. Okay, the Bach Symphonia was one movement. How long was it, approximately? I wasn't, I wasn't here last class, so I kind of just so kind of Okay, but, I, but I'm pretty I sure I put, did I put it on Zoom? Did I, did I put it on YouTube? I think I probably did. Did I always have it on Canvas? So it's like five minutes going down, and right, right. they was yep. asking what is a symphony, and something as well as a symphony. Yeah, so it seems like you didn't really do it then. So yeah. please make sure that you listen to those things because it's really important for what's coming up, okay? So the first thing was the Bach Symphonia that was about seven minutes long and in one movement, okay? And what was a symphony? What, how did it function in the terms of a concert back then in Bach's day? Was it, where did it, it appear? Sorry? It was the first piece before like a grand, like a big performance. To really introduce right. a, a bigger section. It was the first piece in the concert. It would open the concert, and generally it had to be quite dramatic because they didn't have lighting that they could dim back then. It was gas lighting. And the audience would come in and they'd be talking and maybe walking around. And this is a way of getting the audience to sit down and be quiet. Um, and so uh, they played a dramatic, it would be generally be a dramatic piece because people, composers started realizing no one's hearing my music because they're still talking. So they realized the way to get them to sit down and be quiet was to have a lively piece of music and then everyone would sit down. Okay, so that's what the Sinfonia was. It was an opening piece for a concert. That's all it really was. And it would be about seven minutes long, maybe, maybe 10 minutes. Okay, but because it was dramatic, audiences actually started liking the Sinfonias. And so composers were like, okay, well, I'll uh, make a more dramatic Sinfonia. Okay, and then they changed the name to Symphony. Okay, which is just a slight change in the name. And then Haydn came along and we looked at Haydn's symphony. We looked at Haydn's first symphony. So Jesse, now's your moment. Can you tell me about the Haydn first symphony? How would that have been structured? Jesse, I lost you. So, I can't remember the whole thing. <laughs> but, you, but you just told me. So uh, now's your moment, oh, what, what you just said. It's, oh, it's three moments. All right, good. <laughs> three moments, fast, good. slow, fast. Very good. So Haydn came along and wrote symphonies and other people did too, that are now a little bit longer. So this Haydn's first symphony that we listened to was 12 minutes, a bit longer. It's in three movements, right? Which he got from sonat sonatas. So a sonata is a piece for a, usually a keyboard that's in three movements, okay? And the first movement is in sonata form. The first movement. The first movement is divided into three sections, okay? So it's three movements all together. And the first movement divides into three. And those three sections are, as you know, exposition, development, recapitulation. That's the first three sections of the first movement. But there are three movements all together, which will be fast, slow, fast. So that's a sonata, which would probably be for a keyboard. Okay. But Haydn used that same form for a symphony. Matthew, do you want to ask a question? Yep. Yeah, I couldn't find the um, button to raise my hand. Um, I heard you mention something. I just wanted to know, confirm, is that um, Haydn used the sonata form and basically applied it to um, a symphony, kind of way, where there are where there are different sections and applied it to the concept of having a, um, a symphony at the beginning of a show. Was it like something like that, or correct? Absolutely right. Okay. Yes. So this, in Bach's time, in the Baroque time, the Sinfonia was just an opening piece. It didn't really have a, a way of you had to compose it. It just meant it was the opening piece. 
okay? These days we might call that an overture, okay? But back then they were calling it a sinfonia and it was the first piece in the concert and it was just a short piece. Sonatas were popular in the classical time and sonatas, as I said, I'll just say it one more time, was for a keyboard instrument generally and it would be in three movements. And so composers started using that way of writing a piece and writing it for a group and calling it a symphony. Okay, so there would be three movements, fast, slow, fast. The first movement would be done in first movement form or sonata form, which is exposition, development, recapitulation. Okay, so that's Haydn's first symphony, which is around 1760, something like that. Okay, early classical. All right, Haydn was known as the father of the symphony. Who can remember how many he wrote? A hundred and nine. <laughs> Not nine. Hundred and yes, that Matthew was almost there. About four. Hundred and four. He wrote hundred and four symphonies, maybe a little more, perhaps. Um, they might have found a couple more. Okay. So hundred and four symphonies, and we listen to his hundred and fourth. So we listen to his first and is we listen hundred and four. Is he the only one not passing nine? No. <laughs> There's a okay. There's a composer called Havagal Brian that wrote about 180, I think. But um, the, the nine uh, is something we'll come to a bit later. <laughs> but nine became a bit of a number. In a couple of years. <laughs> right. So uh, he wrote 104 symphonies. But bear in mind, when he first started writing, they were only about 12 minutes long. So it's a, quite a, sh it's a relatively short work. Okay. By the time he got to 104, who can remember how long that was, approximately? What's the oh, hour and a half? Joshua. I say about 45 minutes. Yeah, no. Just not, not quite that long, but a little bit less. About half an hour. Okay. okay. So we've gone from half the bark. Yeah. So the bark one was seven minutes. It could be about 10. Then the Haydn's first symphonies were three movements and a little bit longer than 10 minutes. And now he's up to half an hour long. So what about the movements? By the time we get to the end of Haydn, what are the movements? Has it changed? I believe it's in into four movements, right? Yep, four movements. So what got added to our sonata style of three movements? There's one extra, and what is that one extra? Uh, Anybody? Anybody, no? So the one extra is a dance movement. And the dance movement would, would generally be a minuet, a minuet and a minuet and, or a minuet and trio, which is a very popular dance form of music at the time. Okay. So we're now we're at the end of Haydn. Okay. We're in the 1790s. Okay. Which is right in the middle of the classical period. Symphonies are now around half an hour, four movements. Okay. So it's the three from the sonata and add one more dance movement, okay? So we, all those were on canvas. There was also a little introduction to Mozart 40. I put that in there because I only did a little, a little three minute version, uh, not version, three minute clip of Mozart 40, but it's a very famous piece that you might have recognized. Okay, uh, so I put that in there too. Uh, and then the final thing that I wanted you to listen to this week was the Beethoven's Third Symphony which is an extremely famous piece. And we talked about a bit about that last class. Did anyone manage to listen to that recording? And is so, that Eroica? Uh, Eroica, right. Mm -hmm. Eroica. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. there are different ways of saying it. I say Eroica, but it's, uh, there are different ways of saying it. Yes, but that was... Uh, uh, anyone listen to it? Anyone having comments on that recording? I don't get to listen to it as yet, so... Okay. Anyone Good that did... On. Right, so he wrote it about Napoleon, right? What about that recording? Did anyone actually listen to that particular recording? I know they saw, well, most of it, some of it, no, but take my phone away. Okay, so the, the one I posted was an orchestra that was put together with young people from Israel and Palestine. And I just thought that oh. might be kind of interesting to see that, because you know they've been at war for 50 years, basically. So, um, you know, the kind of power of music and bringing those things together. So um, you probably all know about um, um, Stefan West going to Israel, right? Do you know that Stefan West is there and he's doing yeah. a, pa a pan group? 
Right, so this is an orchestra that does this, is doing the same kind of thing. It's bringing people from both sides of the divide together. And the idea is that if people, when they're young, get to understand the other side, that maybe when they get older, and maybe they're in positions of power, they will also be more understanding rather than continuing the, uh, the violence. So it's not really particularly to do with the symphonies that we're looking at, but I just thought it's an interesting uh, group and interesting to kind of just know that it's out there really. Okay, so Beethoven's Third Symphony. How long was that one? Anyone know? Anyone can remember? Seems like maybe didn't oh, really hour. listen. No, an hour. An hour, right. It's about an hour long. Okay, so Beethoven's Third Symphony, where similarish time, but it's got a little bit bigger um, orchestra and bigger and longer in time. Orchestra as well, we noticed also, right? We haven't really talked about that just now. But the orchestra for the Bach was really pretty small. We had two oboes and a bassoon and some strings, right? And it's getting bigger and bigger. They're adding more winds. Then we had brass. We're adding timpani. Okay, so the orchestra's getting bigger as we go along. So bigger, louder, more dramatic. By the time we get to these symphonies that we're talking about now, Beethoven's Third, for instance, it's the main piece in the program. So in Bach's time, it started off as the introductory piece. Now it's the main piece. And Beethoven's Third was one of those uh, early pieces of music that was so popular, it was played in lots and lots of different countries. Okay, remember there were no recordings. People would hear about this piece and say, I want to hear that, but that requires a concert to be put on. Okay, which wasn't so easy in those days. But so many, many concerts you would have found that Beethoven's Third Symphony was on the program around this time. Okay, so that was Beethoven's Third. Beethoven's fifth, everybody knows, right? Ba 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 ba, ba 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 ba. Everybody knows Beethoven's fifth symphony. Okay. Also, similarly, similar sized orchestra to Beethoven's third. Uh, he added three trombones and so slightly bigger. And that was the first symphony to have trombones in it. Was Beethoven's fifth symphony. Uh, in terms of length, it was still about the same. It's still about so it's now about an hour and four movements. And now at this point with the four movements, that's really kind of set in stone. Most symphonies now are those four movements, okay? And it's the same four that we were talking about. Okay, so today we're gonna move on to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And the reason that we're particularly doing this is some people think this is the ultimate symphony. This is like the, uh, the one well, of the great well, works. Oh, to joy, exactly, well done, exactly. So for another very famous melody, and uh, people have thought this was you know, the, the greatest symphony, certainly at the time, they were like, wow, this is just amazing. And even since, you know, it's such a central work um, in classical music, that's important to know about it. So we're gonna have a look over at that, and I'm gonna try and share the sound with you as well. Does everyone have headphones with them? I'm hoping you do. I put a little link that I can see. Yeah, I can see some people are wearing headphones. So I'm going to try sharing the audio today. So it'd be good if you had headphones in for the audio. Okay. I have a good pair of um, speakers here. Let's see some. Okay, if you're happy with your speakers, that's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. So let me just get myself organised here. Okay, hopefully everyone can now see a picture of some uh, ladies singing. I'm gonna zoom back to the beginning here. Yeah. Can I, everyone can see that? Okay, good. Just let, yeah. this, get, let this video kind of reload. Yeah. Hmm, seems to have some video problems. Okay, well, while we're waiting, you can see down the bottom, how long is this piece? Oh, it's 21. Hour hour 20 minutes. Right, an hour 20 minutes. Okay. Wow. So it's got a lot longer. We started with our bark, which wasn't actually much before this. It was only probably um, probably about 100 years earlier for the bark, which was a seven minute piece. 
and now we're at an hour and 20. Well, this really doesn't seem to be very happy. Let me see what I can do. Are you in Napa by chance? Me? No, I'm not allowed in Napa. No, I'm in the net. No. Sorry? No, because you know, the internet is really... No, never mind. Uh, oh, oh, right, you're joking about the internet, right? That's right. a bad joke. <laughs> um, I think that is probably because we're on Zoom and I'm trying to play a video and my kids are doing online Zoom classes with their school. <laughs> so it's probably why I'm struggling with internet right now. Okay, so if I press play, we're going to get... There we go. Okay, so you can now see in front of you the orchestra, okay, which obviously has got a lot bigger from the bar orchestra we looked at the other day. So, let me get rid of that writing and I can maybe show a little bit. So all those people on top there any back are singers as well? This is the choir along here, right. And then in here, you see there's two ladies in red. They're soloists. Yeah. And you can't quite see, but the two guys next to them are soloists too. So there are four solo, yeah, yeah, four solo singers and then the choir. Okay, so not only do we have voices, there have never been voices in a symphony before which made people at the time say, well, is this really a symphony? Um, but, uh, but we have singers. And if you look at the orchestra, much, much bigger. So there's the first violins, second violins over here, violas, cellos, lots of double basses. How many double basses were in the Beethoven, sorry, how many double basses were in the Bach Symphonia? One. One, right? And now we have, what? One, two, three, about eight, I think. <laughs> You can see over here, we've got three trombones. Okay, now, uh, if you go back to earlier days, the trombones were often there to keep the, um, the chorus in tune. They would double up on voices. Okay, so that's partly why Beethoven was including trombones, because they are generally known back then to play with choirs. Over here, we have a couple of trumpets. Okay, a lot of woodwind. So, really, really big orchestra. Um, Okay, so let's just have a little listen to the opening. Okay, we're going to listen to some sections of this piece. All right, let's just have a little bit, listen to the beginning. Oh, and let me know if you're having problems with the sound, okay? Okay, so there's just a little introduction, the beginning of it. Okay, so you can see it's our first movement. When I do that, are you seeing my emails now? What are you seeing? Are you seeing the symphony still? Yes. Okay, okay, fine, right. I'm just trying to check where I'm going next in this video. Okay, so you saw it said the first movement at the beginning, right? That was our first movement. What does that mean, that Italian? Little music theory test for you. 
um, it says a little, little much little. and a little majestic. Very good, very good. Okay, that was the first mm -hmm. movement. Second movement coming up. And we're just going to just do the, um, the highlights, I guess I should say. Okay, second movement, Molto Vivace. What does that mean? More lively. Very lively or very fast. Oh, yeah, very. Okay, here we go. Just, just a little bit of this. I'm just pausing there, having a brief look. Look at that wind section that we're looking at there. What are we seeing? Bassoon. Wait, how many? Bassoon. How many bassoons? I see four. Four bassoons. Four bassoons, right. We only had one in the bark, right? We're up to four now, okay. Mm -hmm. What's down here? Two clarinets and two oboes. Four, four oboes. oboes. Oh. Four oboes here. Yeah, four. Flutes here. Flutes. Clarinets. Clarinets from the corner here. Oh. Okay, good. All right, so that was second movement. Okay. Uh, third movement. Five. Okay, third movement. Okay, this is the end of the second. Okay, so now we're going into the third movement. Hopefully we've got a title. Adagio Molto, a cantabile. Very slow and singing style. I'm going to pause right there. This is a really beautiful movement. It's not really the time to kind of uh, um, sit back and enjoy that, but hopefully you can sit back and enjoy that yourself when you've got some time, okay? All right, zip on ahead again. Up to 52 minutes now for the fourth movement. 52.14, I think it said. Okay, finale, Ode to Joy. Okay, so we're going to listen to just the beginning of this.
I'm just going to zip ahead a little bit. Um, we're going to hear the same music a few minutes later, but uh, with there's going to be a slight change to it. Sorry, guys, I pressed the wrong button. Can I go back to the same spot? Yes, fortunately, I can. Okay, are you still all seeing the symphony there? Yes. Okay. So you couldn't hear that. The singers have sat there for almost an hour and now they're about to sing, getting near the end of the piece. I'm stopping you there just to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so 
um, that was a, a theme about brotherhood and mankind. Um, it was used as the theme for the European Union when that kind of became an entity. Uh, in fact, I even played on that recording. Um, so this piece is um, really a, you know, a, a big change. If you think about um, the Eroica Symphony Number no. 3 when he thought Napoleon was great, and then he changed his mind. But what that was all about was about people coming together and not being held down by society where the rich at the top and the poor at the bottom is about all mankind being together. Um, and people thought Napoleon was going in that direction, then he didn't quite, he became a bit authoritarian, but that idea had taken grip. Now we're used to that idea these days. We're used to thinking about democracy and that people's opinions matter. But that was a new idea back then. Okay, and this was a new theme for mankind. Uh, also, if you think back to Bach's day, he was being told to write pieces. Even Haydn was being told to write pieces. Beethoven thought this was a new, this was art, and this was the most important thing out there. And he was creating basically a national anthem for the, all of mankind. Remember, we talked a few lessons ago about how national anthems were um, being invented, basically. And we listened to that very powerful French national anthem. Okay, so that was kind of a new idea, not long before this piece was written. But he, Beethoven's trying to go beyond that and say, I'm writing a, a national anthem for all of mankind. Okay, so, and you can see uh, in the text there that he's got those, um, that he didn't write that text, that was by Schiller. Um, you can look that up. But um, that text is all about brotherhood and mankind. Okay, so really important um, ideas in there. Ode to Joy, of course, you all knew, right? Um, so, uh, big change, big change in the idea of the piece and the philosophy behind the music. Okay, we can also see there's a big change in the size of the orchestra, in the length of the piece. And we're about to now here, I'm just going to just press pause, we're going to keep going. And there's a section which really highlights those different instruments. And what this section is doing is slightly sending up Napoleon's military idea. Okay, it's not quite as serious as the rest of the piece. So he had like Napoleon, he's changed his mind, and there's a little bit of that coming up in this music here. So you can think about that, he's slightly um, taken the mickey out of Napoleon, but also note the instruments that are being used because they are were barely seen in orchestras at all before now. I didn't mute myself. Okay, who can tell me what instruments they just saw there in that little section? Piccolo. Contrabassoon, piccolo. Clarinet. Clarinet, yes, we had anyway, but yes, clarinet too. What other instruments? Percussion instruments? Symphony. Symphony, triangle. triangle. And there's a bass drum, it's a close up. You might have thought it was a timpani, it's a close up of the bass drum. Uh, so, symbols, right? So, symbols, triangle, bass drum is what then was called Turkish instruments. And they were like military band instruments, they weren't the kind of serious in the concert hall type instruments. Now, we're used to them being in all sorts of things these days, but that was a new idea back then. So he was creating a little military band idea there and making it sound a little comical with that contrabassoon as well, which is kind of, it was a new instrument back then. Okay, but he was using, he was still doing a, like a variation on the Ode to Joy theme there. So that's him saying, yeah, Napoleon, we're kind of laughing at you. This is all mankind together. And uh, we're, we're beyond that now. Okay, so we're going to keep listening. Um, big finish coming up. Oh, 
Of time, guys. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit.
Okay, guys, so there you have it. There you have it. Let me try and see if I can get out of this full screen. And stop there. Yeah, okay, back to us. All right, guys, so that was the uh, highlights from that beta, from the Beethoven Ninth Symphony. Um, and I just wanted to give you that kind of overview about how things have developed all the way from Bach all the way through to there. So now with the beta of the ninth, we'd really kind of open the doors to big extravagant pieces with lots of extra instruments, choir, uh, kind of everything was, was in there now and bigger philosophies, bigger ideas. Okay, so what we've really covered there with two lessons is the development of the symphony from just a kind of a small opening piece in a concert of a few minutes in length to a big major piece that might be the entire concert all on its own. Okay, so we're going to move on next week to another piece that we're going to look at in a bit more detail from a similar kind of time, uh, but uh, with uh, a lot more going on in there. I so, a yeah, Shadow. Um, like the choirs there, right? Like yeah. they use, well, sometimes you won't like you won't really hear the bass. I guess it's because of the like other instruments in the choir, like. Like just asking if it's ever had like instances where they say, "Well, we don't need no bass singers because the instruments already got in the band." <laughs> well, no, no, you need the you need the choir there. So it's um like, like the bass, the bass in the choir. Yeah, well, you would hear them because there's probably about thirty of them. Because yeah, so, at points, at points you will see in them, then at points it's like. Well, you him was the instruments and probably the soprano as well. Well, that, I mean, that, that might be your headphones. Um, I, I think probably you would miss them if they weren't there. I mean, they don't come, they don't carry as much as the higher sounds. But I mean, that goes for anything, really. The, uh, the higher pitches will carry more, but that lower, the lower pitches will add that depth and they'll add the richness to the sound. So I'm pretty sure you would miss it. Um, if it wasn't there, certainly no one's going to go to the lengths of putting on a performance of Beethoven 9 and saying, hey, you know what, we can do without those people. That's just not going to happen. Because if you want to go to the lengths of putting on that kind of a performance, you're going to try and make sure that everybody is, is there. Okay, so, um, so we've just been looking at that development of the symphony, and we're going to look at a symphony in particular next week. So... Uh, so make sure you kind of take note of everything that we said today. Um, have listened some more. We've got the, uh, the notes from Monday, which you could go back over. It seems like people haven't really listened to those pieces. So please have a listen. You don't have to listen to all of everything, but go in and have a listen. Uh, this recording is also posted online on, uh, under assignments for today's class. Um, there's a score as well, if you need to look at it. Obviously, it's a pretty big score. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, yes. So next week, Monday is a holiday. Um, so the next two Mondays, in fact, we have two weeks left of class and both Mondays are holidays. Um, I'm a bit concerned really about leaving what we have left to just two classes. We could, but I think it would be good to try and fit another class in. Um, seeing as think how things are going at the moment, would people uh, want to do a class on Monday? Or do you have other stuff going on being a holiday? Yeah, we... What? You, Matthew, you got stuff going on? Absolutely nothing for the past week. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Must be nice. No, just cool. <laughs> well, I, I would really quite like to arrange a class next week. Either could be the same time on Monday or it could be a different, could do a different day. Could any, okay, can anyone not do Monday? I can do Monday, I can. Okay, well, well let's stick with the Monday then, okay? Because um, I, I wanna kind of give you a heads up of the next two weeks, so I'd rather not leave it till Friday, okay? Uh, if you wanna message me and say you've got family stuff going on, that's totally fine. It is a holiday on Monday, um, but I will run, the, as long as most people can come, I will run the class anyway, and uh, we'll get stuck in with the last lot of um, the last assignment. Okay, so just so you know what's coming up, you're, you've got the young person's guide to submit if you haven't done that already. Uh, we had Monday's class, which leads into today's, which leads into next week. So try and keep up with all that information. 
and it's gonna it's all going into a last essay and you have about four weeks to <laughs> oh, whoa sorry. wow <laughs> that was loud I got, I, I got surround sound Shadell sneeze here <laughs> okay so we've got about four weeks for that last assignment but we've only got a few more classes so I'm just trying to make sure you get all that information in there okay and I will bear in mind that some people are working off a phone as well. Matthew, yeah. How long is this, how long do we have to complete the last assignment? Uh, well, I think it's really big. Yeah, it, well, it's an essay. It has to be done by the end of um, exam times. And I'm just looking at what exactly that date is. Do we have a final exam? Like a no, you just have exam. one more assignment. So it's the 8th of May is actually the end of the end of everything. Okay, I'm hoping you might get them in before that. But yeah, you've got a good kind of four weeks there. Okay, and I will be going through everything with you. Yes, so show you. The assignments that are open back up. Well, I saw it was open on Canvas, like the Jewish folk songs and all of those things. Are they still like open for submission? Uh, yep. So the way the course works is it's 20% um, on assignments, the smaller ones, it's 30% is the blues assignment, and 50% is on the last assignment. Okay, that's, okay. Kind of, that's kind of set in stone. I don't, that's not something that I set, that's set for me. Okay. Okay. So and is it that if you missed it, we can go ahead and well, fill in those assignments? Well, submit them? Well, I would, I would concentrate on getting that young person's guide in, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, uh, excuse me, Adam. Yeah, Antonio, yeah. The, um, I saw on the assignments, the religious influences. Yes. Um, 400 points as a, as an essay. Yeah, but I would just, uh, I would just encourage you to focus now on the, um, I'm uh, just having a look here on the, on the young person's guide. Okay. So okay. young person's guide needs to come in okay you've all done the fugue um the religious influences was really kind of going to the concert at the beginning researching folk songs okay the art song structure lad analysis they're all going into that 20 percent okay the 30 percent is the blues which you all did and then the 50 percent is the ending okay now bear in mind that a lot of this stuff that we're doing is contributing to that last assignment so all the stuff from today, last from Monday and today is all building into that last assignment. And some of the other stuff, the young person's guide is also going to help you with the last assignment. Okay. Cause we're looking at instruments there. Okay. Fugue is also going into that last assignment. Okay. Theme and variations is going to the last assignment. Uh, so, uh, sonata form, symphonic form, all those things are all combining in the last assignment. Okay, so a lot of this stuff, make sure you kind of hold on to that information because it's going to be relevant. I'm not doing today's class just out of interest alone, or hopefully it's interesting. It is definitely building up into that last assignment, which is about a symphony. But um, you will be able to refer to other symphonies in your essay if you have taken note of all the stuff that was being said. Okay, there is a fugue in the symphony that we're looking at next week. So as long as you know what a fugue is and a bit about it, that's going to help you. Okay, there's going to be a lot about instrumentation. Okay, so all those things are going to go into that. Napoleon makes a bit of an appearance. Okay, so all those things are important in the last assignment. So we're going to pull all that information together. Okay, all right, I'm kind of running over. I think some of you might have another Zoom session to go to probably. Okay, so unless there are any questions, um, I'm going to sign off. I will see you on Monday at 9.30. Let me know if you can't do it, that's fine. And I will just make sure that you catch up on the information. This video, this Zoom session right now is being recorded and I will put it on Vimeo and put a link on Canvas. Okay, so all the information should be on Canvas for you. Okay. All right, guys, any more questions? No? Okay, no. I will. S no, no, okay. Have a good weekend. I will see, you on, see you on Monday. Bye bye.